This is Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review with your CFL Week 8 preview. Four games, as always, on the CFL slate, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, are when the games take place this week. Let's start by looking at the Thursday game to kick off Week 8, as the Montreal Alouettes face the Edmonton Eskimos, uh, two teams uh, looking to bounce back from losses last week. Montreal losing 38-18 at home to BC. Edmonton falling in a close game to the Ottawa Red Blacks, 23-20. Edmonton's lost three straight. Montreal's lost four of their last five games. So you've got two slumping teams, two desperate teams really coming into this game. And the way I see it, Montreal's defense, the strength of that team, or what was supposed to be the strength of that team, hasn't exactly been a big strength for them uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks. I mean, we've seen Montreal's defense really fall on hard times a little bit. We're talking about a defense, you know, that's allowed uh, 31 points to Hamilton, 30 points to Toronto, 38 last week to BC. Uh, just some real shoddy numbers from a defense that usually in years past has been pretty good. Uh, and that's going to be a problem now. You're facing a very good Edmonton offense, although they didn't look very good last week against Ottawa. They should be better. They have put up points at home. Mike Riley in that offense still has a ton of weapons at receiver. And a big cog on that offensive line is back for the Eskimos in this game. Justin Sorensen, their starting center, expected to return from injury for this game. So that should be a big boost. Uh, it should be a very interesting game. Kevin Glenn and the Montreal offense, as poorly as they played early in the season, they look like they're starting to gain some traction. They're playing better. They're gaining first downs. They're moving the football. They're still turning the ball over a bit too much. Uh, but we're starting to see some production. They're getting the ball in the hands of their all, uh, their, their do-it-all wide receiver, their most explosive player on the team, Deron Carter, and that is benefiting this offense. So we'll see if they can make some hay here against Edmonton's defense, which has been very leaky, uh, especially in the secondary. Uh, I think Montreal might be a little bit live here. I still don't trust Edmonton laying this amount of points, uh, laying a full touchdown here at home. You look at their track record, laying significant points. You look at their two victories this season. They beat Saskatchewan by three. They beat Winnipeg by four. Haven't even sniffed a victory by this kind of margin yet this season. So if I were to play this one, I'd look to Montreal as a plus seven dog in this game. Also, I think this game could set up to be higher scoring as well would lean over the total. 7-1-1, one, one, the over in the last nine meetings between the Alouettes and Eskimos may seem more of the same here. Friday night, we've got the Winnipeg Blue Bombers taking on the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, Winnipeg, boy, they've looked like a different offense in two games with Matt Nichols as the quarterback taking over from Drew Willey, and boy, the results have been very, very strong for Matt Nichols. Uh, Big win against Edmonton on the road, 30-23. to They absolutely annihilate Hamilton, 37-11 last week. So 67 points in two games for this Winnipeg team with Matt Nichols at quarterback. So you can't argue with those results. They've been getting the job done. Very impressive last week, too, because we're talking about a very injury-riddled receiving core. No Weston Dressler, no Ryan Smith, no Darvin Adams, three of their top receivers, and they still were able to move the football with a totally revamped receiving core. You know, faces from the past coming back, Clarence Denmark, you know, Chris Adams, Rory Colert, you know, a couple of newcomers making an impact as to, in the receiving core. Very impressive stuff. Obviously a team that uh, maybe has a little bit more depth at receiver than people thought, uh, and it was certainly on display in their win against Hamilton last week. Now we'll see if they can take that improved offense on the road here to face the Argos. Uh, Toronto team who, coming off the bye week, has really performed well, especially offensively. I mean, the statistics with Toronto uh, off the bye week, they've been pretty darn, they've been really impressive, actually. Uh, Ten days off between games, they've been in this situation six times where they've had ten or more days off before playing a game. They are 5-1 and one straight up, 4-2 and two against the spread in those games, and in five of those six games, they've scored 30 points or more. So this is an offense that uses the bye week usually puts a good foot forward in terms of moving the football coming out of their bye, which is not a surprise. I mean, Toronto's offense, very complex playbook uh, that Scott Milanovic has. Uh, and as a result, usually Toronto's a team offensively that maybe can take an adv advantage of a bye week and extra time to practice more than maybe some other teams might. So, uh, you know, you get 
you know, more reps, more of an opportunity to learn. And that's why we've seen Toronto, you know, in years past, since Milanovic has been the head coach, coming out of a bye. They've performed very well. Uh, they've scored a lot of points. They've won a lot of games. So uh, we'll see if that track record can continue here against Winnipeg. Winnipeg has been better on the road than they've been at home. Uh, you know, a road win at Hamilton this year, a road win at Edmonton. This season, we'll see if they can keep their road magic going. We're going to come back to this game, actually, at the end of the video. This will be play of the week material uh, for week eight in the CFL. We'll get back to it at the end of the video and give you a recommendation on this game. Saturday, there's two games. Calgary and Saskatchewan, the first one, a rematch of last week where the Calgary Stampeders absolutely rolled in the fourth quarter, turned what was a very close game into a, you know, a lot more lopsided final score than really... Uh, it, the game was, when you look at it, I mean, 35-15 was the final score. Stampeders winning by 10, but that game was very close going into the fourth quarter. But Calgary just dominated on both sides of the football, offense and defense, in the fourth quarter. They end up outgaining Saskatchewan by 142 yards. Uh, Darian Durant made his return at quarterback for Saskatchewan, back from injury, but didn't have a great performance by any stretch, especially in the second half. He was really shut down. Normally, when a team like Calgary, they beat a team at home. They go back on the road. They're playing that very same team the next week. I like to go against that team, which you would think might have me leaning towards Saskatchewan here, but I'm a little bit worried. I mean, Saskatchewan, okay, their one home win did come at home this year against Ottawa, but uh, Bo Levi Mitchell, the Calgary quarterback, uh, is a little bit riled up by the Saskatchewan team. He has uh, voiced his opinion on Twitter this week about some maybe some allegations of Saskatchewan, you know, bending the ru CFL rules uh, and maybe breaking them, so to speak, in terms of practice time, the number of players they're signing, uh, etc. Bo Levi Mitchell was vocal on Twitter about that, and apparently it riled up some Ryder fans who decided to, you know, flap their gums right back at the Calgary quarterback on Twitter. And a little bit of a jawing session there between Mitchell and these uh, Saskatchewan Rough Rider uh, faithful fans. Uh, just going back and forth, and you know what? It makes me think that Bo Levi Mitchell might be a pissed-off quarterback going into the, into this game, and he is one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Make no mistake about it. So if he's pissed off and he's thinking, you know what? I enjoyed beating this team last week. I want to beat him again. If he has that kind of mindset and knowing the kind of competitor he is, it would not shock me to see him take that kind of mindset. Uh, that's not the quarterback I want to be betting against here in this situation, especially the way he's playing, especially the way he played last week against this Saskatchewan defense, which really had no answers for him, or Jerome Messam on the ground as he just churned out yards and, you know, uh, churned the clock, uh, wind it down, just tremendous time-consuming punch it in the end zone drives for Calgary to put that game away last week. Very impressive stuff. Uh, if Bo Levi Mitchell's fired up to play and not, you know, no let avoids the letdown of that win last week, then the rest of the players on that Calgary team may follow suit. So for that reason, I'd be a little bit reluctant to just assume that Calgary's going to look past Saskatchewan because they beat them last week. If they come focused and ready to play, I have trouble backing Saskatchewan here. So I'm not going to get involved in this game, uh, but at anything less than a touchdown, it's I, I, I can't go against Calgary just because of, you know, this potential little added bit of intensity they might have for this game. Uh, not a game I'm going to get involved with, though. Uh, should be interesting, but again, if Calgary's motivated, uh, I'm not sure Saskatchewan's got the horses, especially on defense, where it's still a, a major work in progress for even the defensive guru that is Chris Jones to get this team to improve on that side of the football. So not a game with a strong betting opinion for me. Uh, we're going to wrap up our look at Week 8. With Hamilton and BC, what could be the best game of the week uh, in the CFL? BC's phenomenal. I love watching this team play on both sides of the football. They have been just fantastic uh, defensively. Strong defensive line. Solid secondary. And how about the way they played against Montreal last week? You can make your argument that, hey, Montreal's offense isn't great, uh, but... BC was gutted with injuries last week going into that game. Tons of guys on the defensive line out. Secondary was uh, down a couple of cornerbacks, including Brandon Stewart. And it didn't seem to matter. BC is able to just keep on uh, going uh, with a great performance. And they beat Montreal 38-18 uh, on the road last week. And this is a team where, again, if you're back betting on BC week in and week out, you're doing well. BC 4-2 and two straight up, 5-1 and one against the spread this season. And they're only laying 2.5 points here at home. And that, to me, 
uh, tells me right there there's no value on the Hamilton side. Now Hamilton does get Zach Kalaros back. He's been out for almost a year. This is one of the best quarterbacks in the CFL when he is healthy, when he's playing at his A, at his a level. The question is how quickly can he return to that A level. We are talking about a guy that's been out for almost a year. That torn ACL, now you're coming back. Let's see how he performs. You're on the road now against a pretty good defense, uh, a defense that probably is going to get some pieces back this week. Uh, they're hoping it, at least anyway that they're going to get a few guys back from that, especially along that defensive line, which had some cluster injuries to it. But either way, not an easy first game for Zach Kalaros to return the way in the way the BC Lions have been playing. Uh, again, Hamilton coming off just a disastrous game last week in Winnipeg. The lightning delay really uh, negatively hurt them in that game against Winnipeg uh, as they lose 37-11 just got blown out in the first half and never recovered. Uh, there's going to be an emotional lift that Zach Kalaros gives everyone on this Hamilton team. The problem is, I don't think the value is there point spread wise. I think it's a good spot for Hamilton off the bad game against Winnipeg, their number one quarterback returning, but you just don't know how sharp he's going to be. He could be rusty. Uh, he could be a guy that's just not quite got his best game in him. First game back and almost a year out of the, out of the, out of the league. So uh, I have a very that's my biggest concern, really, with backing uh, the Tie Cats in this game. Plus, like I said, point spread. You're talking about a 4-2 BC team, 5-1 and one against the spread. They've been fantastic. They've been one of the best teams here so far in the CFL this season, and now you're laying just 2.5 at home with them. That seems like a bargain to me, and I think it is a night where the BC Lions are honoring Jason Claremont, one of their star receivers from the past, and putting him on the wall of honor there. So those ceremony games usually tend to pump up the home team. So I had initial interest in Hamilton with Kolaros back, but not at this price. I can only look toward BC laying less than a field goal here at home. Uh, and BC all of a sudden has transitioned to an over team. Three straight overs they've cashed because Jonathan Jennings in this offense rolling 40-41 uh, and 38 points scored uh, in their last three games. That's probably a reason why we see this one of the highest totals all year involving BC, 54-54.5. Uh, it all depends on Kalaros. I think BC is going to put up points, but what will Hamilton do and how sharp will Kalaros be? Uh, lean uh, slightly to the over here, but again, not going to get involved because I want to sit back and see what Kalaros does here uh, in that first game back for the Hamilton Ticats. And not a moment too soon. You give Jer Jeremiah Masoli credit for the way he played, but I think Hamilton will be happy to have Zach Kalaros back without a doubt. All right, let's wrap up the video. It's play of the week time, uh, our CFL Week 8 play of the week. We're 4-3 on on these plays so far this week. We had a nice winner with BC Montreal flying over the total last week with our play of the week. We're going to go back to the Winnipeg Toronto game on Friday night, our play of the week. We're going to lay the three and a half, four points with Toronto. We'll call it minus four since it's pretty much minus four across the board. That's rotation number 304. We're going to lay the four with the Toronto Argonauts at home uh, against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. As I mentioned, Toronto 5-1 and one straight up, 4-2 and two against the spread. Their last six games since 2014 with at least 10 days off prior to the game. They've made the most out of extra prep time, extra practice time. We've seen a good, crisp Argos offense coming out of bye weeks, coming out of weeks where they have a lot of days to prepare prior to the game. I think Logan Kilgore, who looked pretty good in his first ever CFL start in Ottawa on the road, no less, leading the Argos to a 23-20 win. I think that offense can look crisp in this game and will do enough to lead the Argos to a home win and cover in this game. So Toronto minus four. That's your CFL Week 8. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts. Shop for lines at sbrodds.com. Always be ahead of the game.